Profile 1014 is important because it shows us that crizotinib should be used as first-line therapy in patients who have newly diagnosed ALK-positive lung cancer. Profile 1014 also shows us that um, there is some activity of crizotinib in the brain, um, and that's important because there are patients who are newly diagnosed who may have small brain metastases that are asymptomatic, and I would feel very comfortable starting those patients on crizotinib based on Profile 1014 data. The central nervous system still is, though, the most common site of relapse for patients who are treated with crizotinib. So it's, there is uh, activity there, but it is somewhat limited. In patients who have previously received crizotinib, um, and the, most of those in this study had failed on crizotinib, electinib was very active. The response rate was close to 60%. Um, the durations of response were very long, and most responses were actually ongoing even at the time of last follow-up. For electinib, um, the authors also showed that this drug is very active in, in the brain. So even patients who enrolled on the study with untreated brain metastases metastases had very long durations of response. There were uh, measurable brain lesions that uh, regressed completely in response to electinib. So I think this study is important. It's one of several now that do establish that next generation ALK inhibitors like electinib, also seritinib and AP26113 are all very active in patients who have previously failed crizotinib. Really highlight that next generation ALK inhibitors should be a standard therapy for our patients who fail on crizotinib.